Okay, so I guess it's fitting that Channel 1 is trying to slowly redeem themselves. And I've taken a break for the past couple of days talking about the uh, news in particular to pay my respects properly to NYPD Officer Wilbert Mora and... We are going to talk about another cop that got shot, but the good news is that officer did get discharged from the hospital yesterday. So we're going to get into that. We need to get into an urgent situation that um was brought up. And subway safety has got to be top priority right now i honestly think out of all the crime going on right now okay robbery is one thing you know the police have to focus on that but the number one thing for our quality of life in new york city is the fact that our subways right now are bottom line not safe they're, they're just not and the bottom line is we have to be vocal about it. We have to, you know, keep talking about it. This discussion can never end. It shouldn't until we can at least start to feel safe in our subway system. Because at one point you say enough is enough. Okay. There is a turning point. I think Channel 1... And I will give them credit for at least talking about it. But they didn't mention anything about the other fires that happened anywhere on the one train. And, you know, we're going to take a look at my Twitter as we go along here. But uh, let's read this article. Let's read this. So you, this is something you can, you cannot, I'm sorry, my vocabulary is so off because I'm just disturbed to even read this headline. Okay, here's what it says. Here's what it says. Microwave on tracks, fire inside drain cars. I mean, really? How does a microwave end up on the subway tracks? Likely a homeless person brought it in. In a shopping cart for all we know. And at what point do you realize that these homeless people, if they're refusing help, you know, in the Giuliani days, they would be issued trespassing warrants. And they'd say, sorry, you're going to keep going into the subway system. Out you go. Bye-bye. It used to be like that a long time ago, but we got soft on that. Now did we? Sorry, but you want shelter? It's for shelter. Jail. Bottom line. Right? You're not you are a danger to public safety if you're gonna be homeless and you're gonna sleep in the subway. Alright? And some of them are emotionally disturbed. And some of them possibly need solitary confinement. Not all of them. But some. Here we go. Look at this. 50th Street Station on the west side of Manhattan. Microwave was tossed. So let's see where this station is. I know exactly where it is. Mm-hmm. Let's go to 8th Avenue and West 50th. Right here. Right over here. Yep. I know exactly where this is. Do a street view of the outside. If it'll even budge, that would be fantastic. Yeah, so this is what the subway station looks like. This is a better idea of it. Okay. So, again, they don't even mention anything about those fires on the one line. So, you know where we have to go? 
we have to go to CBS2 New York. And by the way, they actually have a video on the website. So danger for commuters. There have been at least two fires inside subway cars over the past five days. Yeah, sorry about that. Had to unplug my capture card. So look at this. Look at this. Commuters, there have been at least two fires inside subway cars. A minute and 46 seconds. Literally. Over the past five days. One. A minute and 46 seconds. You cannot make this stuff up. Okay, here we go. So let's read what happened. And by the way, this happened the same day we had the funeral for Jason Rivera. So, literally, on one part of Manhattan, you're having an NYPD funeral at St. Patrick's, and then this is happening in a nearby subway station. Alright, so here we go. This happened at the 18th Street Station on the one line, Friday, January 28th, 10 a.m. So, here's a video of it. Here's a video of it. And I posted this on my Instagram. There was an Instagram reel of this. Look at this. Look at this. This is a subway. This is a subway. How is there a fire in the subway? On purpose. That could happen on the 7 line. Elevated track. Sorry for ranting. But people have got to start realizing that our public, that this is a matter of public safety right now. We are at war for our public safety. And, and, and look, 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 Eric Adams and Kathy Hochul are just smiling at us right now. They, they, they claim they care, but they don't care. They don't. Trust me, if Sliwa had become the mayor, all the emotionally disturbed would have been out of the system in a month. A whole month. They would have all been out of the system. Gone. They would have either gotten help or they would have went to jail. <sighs> and look at this. So ironically... We have a funeral of another cop, 181st Street. Thankfully, nobody was hurt, but still. Still. When is it going to take for people to realize that enough is enough? This is causing a chain reaction to our state right now. Do you honestly think what's going on in the city is not going to transpire into any of the other suburbs of, of New York? Um, I'm going to go into the proof right now. Let's go to Long Island for an example. Let's go to Long Island. Let's see. I know I don't want to talk about Long Island. Here we go. That's not it. No, where's the other one? Here we go. Multiple people were victims of robberies on Hillside Avenue while walking or waiting for the bus. No money was robbed from Langdale Street to Cross Island Parkway on Hillside Avenue. According to the two victims who were robbed on Winchester Boulevard in Springfield, emotionally disturbed people kept bothering for money. <sighs> and then look at this. Burglaries continue. I mean... What else is new? What else is new? Yeah, here we go. So this is the example of why I think people in Long Island should really pay attention to what's going on in the city and why I'm making videos about the city. Here we go. Long Island, February 3rd, 711 in Uniondale, 333 Oak Street. Suspect displayed a gun and took off with cash on foot. 7.30 p.m. Armed arm robbery, 467 Old Country Road. Suspect displayed firearm and took off with cash on foot. So there you go. See, this is why I'm saying pay attention to what's going on in New York City. Because this is transpiring into the suburbs. 
It is. This is the chain reaction. One domino falls, the next crumbles. Yeah, so we'll get to the police activity full up later on at Forest Park, because John 1 didn't cover that. Mm-mm. Nope. So where's the update on the, um, here we go. Look at this. Filming. Well, I'm not looking for that, no. Here we go. Police are at the Union Turnpike Station. It happened yesterday, February 3rd. Male struck by a train dead at the Kew Gardens Union Turnpike Station for the E and F line. So, very unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Again, Child One's not going to cover that. Mm-mm. Nope. All right, so let's go on my Twitter. And I want to show you something interesting. And, of course, you can follow me at Andy's Randomness. Very easy to find me. So today, a letter was sent out to the chairman of the MTA that this is from how many Republicans? One, two, three, four. Yeah, five members of the New York City Council who are Republicans. So obviously, we're going to read this. So what I want to do is put these in the new tab. And I want you to take a look at this. Because here we go. This is from Joe Borelli, Republican Minority Leader. Here we go. Dear Chairman Lieber, we are running to respectfully ask that you consider hiring additional MTA police officers to improve subway safety rather than move forward with any plan to construct automated subway platform barriers and a limited number of stations as we suggested by several others last week. As you are well aware, a 2019 study by the MTA determined that it would be feasible to implement these automated barriers at only 128 stations, the majority of which are in Manhattan. The cost of construction of these stations alone was estimated to be between $6.5-$7.1 billion, depending on the barrier height, with an annual maintenance of $119 million. Even assuming these estimates are still accurate, which is unlikely, given the skyrocketing cost of material and labor due to pandemic-fueled inflation, as the well-documented history of MTA projects going over schedule and over budget, this cost would compromise about 18% of New York City Transit's entire $40 billion five-year capital budget. We have no doubt that the automated platform barriers would provide additional safety for passengers and may help make the system more efficient, but this is just a staggering cost considering the limited benefit that they would have. Barriers may prevent riders from jumping, falling, or even being pushed onto the tracks, but they cannot stop assault or harassment, nor they cannot restrain violent criminals or remove mentally ill people from the platform or trains. While it was worthwhile further studying automated platform barriers with the long-term goal of making them a reality, this should not be a priority. It also should not be noted that about half of the MTA's revenue is derived from tolls collected on the bridges and tunnels, as well as various payroll and commuter taxes. In addition, the MTA is projecting to bring in an additional $15 billion from now until fiscal year 2027 from its congestion pricing proposal. These are tolls and fees that are and will be largely paid by outer borough commuters Many of them utilize subway stations that would not have automatic barriers were this plan to move forward. In essence, this will yet again be another... Oh, sorry about that. This will yet again be another MTA benefit bestowed on the Central Business District with the costs borne by the outer boroughs. At a fraction of the cost of, construction of constructing automatic barriers... The MTA could hire five additional new police officers who could have made a more immediate impact on subway station on subway safety. A constructive estimate by the Citizens Budget Commission in 2019 determined that adding 500 cops, including benefits, overtime, and additional supervisors would cost the MTA only about $60 million per year 
or about $240 million until 2026. Rather than impacting less than 30% of subway stations, these officers could be deployed system-wide or to any station in which there are safety concerns. We believe hiring more police officers not only provides a better cost-to-benefit ratio for all MTA customers, it is also a more responsible use of taxpayers' money, considering the real budgetary challenges your agency and the city are now facing. We thank you for your time, courtesy, and consideration. So, as you can see here, Ina Furkoff from Brooklyn. You got two Republicans, Joe Borelli, David Carr from Staten Island, and two Republicans from Queens, Joanna Rolia and Vicky Palladino. So, obviously, you know, I'm glad that the Republicans are being serious about this. That's a given right there. Let me just take a look at my notifications. Oh, thank you. I, I appreciate you retweeting me. <laughs> okay, but in reality, let's take a look at this. This happened on Wednesday. Uptown 2 train. I mean, look at this. We're like the East Coast version of San Francisco. That's how bad this is. Okay, so I'm going to take a sip of water. And we're going to move on now to the next story. And as you can see here, Channel 1 did cover a house explosion that happened in Brooklyn. So let's read this. This actually happened today. So look at that. So this happened at Bay 35th Street between Benson Avenue and 86th Street in Gravesend around 7.10 a.m. That home and an adjacent one at 69 Bay 35th Street sustained major damage and then collapsed. So, very unfortunate. We have a video of this. I mean, very, very unfortunate that this happened. I'm going to retweet this. Right now, so you all can see it. No, this is from earlier today, but still, I mean, very, very unfortunate. Third house at 71 Bay 35th Street with broken windows, interior and smoke damage. 61 Bay 35th Street sustained some minor damage. So... And then this was after the explosion. Wow. I mean, obviously, the fire department would respond very quickly to this. So they're still looking into what caused the explosion, but people in the area were smelling it for a while, even before the explosion, and... You know, I don't understand why the fire department couldn't inspect this area. Okay, so this is in the Gravesend section. So I know exactly where this is. Not too far from where Coney Island Hospital is. So obviously, if somebody was seriously injured, they would have been sent right to Coney Island Hospital. Yeah, so. Let's see what the building looked like before the explosion. Just to get an idea. Oh, yeah, I see. This is suspicious. I mean, what's this doing in front of the house? Oh, this must have been for Halloween. Yeah. I don't want to see what the house looked like during Halloween. Here we go. This thing better than that. Much better Halloween decorations, that's for sure. Okay, here's May of 2018. This didn't look like a bad house. And then here's May 2011. And as you can see here, it doesn't look that bad. 
So, very unfortunate this happened. I'm glad Channel 1 did cover it. And then this happened. Officer Manuel Soto was released from Jamaica Hospital after he was shot while off duty. Very unfortunate that this happened, but Channel 1 did spend two minutes. So here we go. Mm-hmm. I'm just double checking. So this is it right here. Two teens from the Rockaways were arraigned in Queens Criminal Court. So I'm going to move this to the left so you can read this. In charge in the February 1st shooting of an off-duty police officer in the Arvine section of Queens, according to District Attorney Melinda Katz. Chad Conley of Rockaway Beach Boulevard was arraigned before Queens Criminal Court Judge Lori P Peterson on a 13-count complaint charging him with attempted murder in the first degree and other crimes. Ja'ari Robinson, 18 of Beach Drive and Arvine, was arraigned before Judge Peterson on an 11-count complaint charging him. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Again with these typos? Ugh. Attempted murder in the second degree and other crimes. At around 10 p.m. on the evening of Tuesday, February 1st, the two defendants walked up to a vehicle at a traffic light of Beach Channel Drive and Beach 62nd Street. Coley allegedly tapped on the driver's side window and demanded that the driver get out of the vehicle. The driver, 22-year-old off-duty cop Manuel Soto, got out of his car. Video surveillance shows Kali and Robinson standing on either side of the victim who didn't attempt to get away from them. Kali allegedly fired three shots at the officer and one bullet struck him in the head. The off-duty cop returned fire but hit neither of his assailants. Two, defendants, the two defendants then fled on foot from the scene. So, here we go. 100 precinct did respond. So, the two gunmen were followed at Beach Channel Drive and Beach 59th Street, stopped a few feet in front of them, and then exited the vehicle. Okay, so it says, Conley allegedly fired a shot at the officers, hitting the rear of the car. Defendant then allegedly threw the gun, which was later recovered, into a patch of grass and continued running. Shortly after, the uniformed officers apprehended both men. So, three shell casings were recovered at Beach 62nd and Beach Channel Drive. So... Very disturbing. Very, very disturbing. So here we go. Officer Soto was released from Jamaica Hospital yesterday. And sadly, I have to report that this is the sixth member of the NYPD shot this year. So again, very, very, very unfortunate that this keeps happening. I mean, this has been... So far, a very unfortunate year for the NYPD. Since January 1st, I've lost track of how many police officers have been shot. And also the fact that two of them have been fatal this year. Two. Two officers. So we're going to read a quote from Melinda Katz in the courtroom. This was a brazen carjacking attempting to all too easily could have ended in yet another tragedy for the NYPD and all New Yorkers. As alleged, the defendants, one of them brandishing a gun, confronting the victim, an off-duty NYPD officer, as he sat in his car at a red light. After the cop got out of his car, the defendant, Kali, allegedly fires three shots. One of them hit the victim in the shoulder. The defendants then fled and Defendant Conley allegedly shot at the uniformed officers who were able to apprehend them. This blatant disregard for human life must be answered with certain justice. So again, this is what a prosecutor is supposed to do in the courtroom. Thank you again, Melinda Katz. You know, this is why I'm so grateful that we have her as our district attorney. Because she actually believes in law and order. Not like Alvin Bragg in Manhattan. Okay, here we go. So both defendants must return to court on Monday, February 7th.
both suspects face up 25 years to life in prison. So, uh, these guys better be in prison for a very long time because they almost murdered an off-duty NYPD officer. So they need to go to jail. Sorry. Not sorry. By the way, Channel 1 ignored this. Shooting at a white castle in East Harlem leaves one man injured. So here we go. 5.20 p.m. on February 3rd, the NYPD responds to a 911 call regarding a man shot at East 103rd Street and 1st Avenue. Upon their arrival, cops found a 34-year-old man who had been shot in the chest. Good news is the victim was taken to Metropolitan Hospital where he will be expected to survive his injuries. So, there is no motive for a shooting. But, however, the victim shot the 34-year-old has had a lengthy history with law enforcement. Ongoing investigation. So, very, very unfortunate. You cannot make this stuff up. And then look at this. Crime up 38.5%. So, we're going to take a look at some of these numbers, because thankfully Channel 1 has them very brief. But they did cover it on the air. I will mention that, but no actual report. Okay. Shooting incidents in New York City rose 31.6% from January of 2021 to 100 last month. Transit crimes reported from... 75.2% from 113 to 198. Not to mention, I will bring up the fact that we have a new commissioner of the Transit Bureau for NYPD. Kathleen O'Reilly resigned. So, we have Jason Wilcox, who is the new commissioner. Rape rose 26.7% from 101 to 128. Robberies rose up 33.1% from 940 to 1,251 felony assaults rose 12.3% from 1,546 to 1,736. Burglary rose 7.5% from 1,106 to 1,189. That includes a carjacking in the confines of the 107 precinct that happened on Union Turnpike a couple weeks ago. Grand larceny rose 58.5% from 2,559 to 4,047. Grand theft auto on the rise, 91.5% from 620 to 1,187. Hate crimes, that's a big one that needs to be paid attention to. 72%, 18 to 31. Half of them were anti Semitic, and a bunch of them were anti Asian. Hmm, interesting. So, homicide went down. Five few murders in 2022 and in January 2021. So, that's interesting. So, how is that surprising? How in the world does the ha Homicide number go down. Really? Alright, so let's just wrap this up and take a look at some of the more wool stuff. Let's just take a look. Here we go. Just double checking. Hang on here. Oh, look at this. Channel 1 didn't cover this. Multi-vehicle accident. Grand Central Parkway, LIE. Happened in Corona. Five vehicles involved in the accident. Very unfortunate. And look at this. Multi-vehicle accident. Cross Island Parkway. Happened last week. Actually, no, it happened on Monday. No. Oh, happened on Monday. Where was Channel 1 on this?
Ryobi. Where was the fire in Whitestone? Here we go. 19-21 Clintonville Street. Basement fire. Excuse me. I'm sorry, but this crime just gives me so much indigestion. It's just... Ugh. Here's the last one. Gas! Another gas leak! Same in Brooklyn! Jekyll Turnpike in 247th Street. Basement of the building. You could not make this stuff up. And then what happened in Forest Park? Suspect hit a police vehicle. Atlantic Avenue in 85th Street. Suspect ran a police vehicle with two officers inside during patrol. Vehicle is a Honda Accord with plates from Maryland. <sighs> I mean, I'm just curious if the vehicle was from Eastern Shore, but that's not besides the point. Thankfully, the good news is cops were not injured. One more thing before we wrap up this video. I'm hoping I can find it. But where is it? Um, I thought I saw an article about good news about COVID. Where is it? If not, we'll just have to check the governor's Twitter feed. Because I do want to get some good news about COVID. Okay, that's not the most accurate. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to go on Twitter and get to Governor Hochul. Here we go. I know I, know I don't want to talk about coronavirus, but there is some good news that I do have to discuss. Here we go. So, officially, we are down below 5% rate of infection for the first time since December, which is excellent news. So officially, according to our graph, we officially peaked on January 6th, right around here. Each day since January 6th, the number has been going down or has been plateauing, meaning it stays in a flat rate. Uh, obviously, we're not really going to see major improvement of the numbers going down until most likely by the middle of this month. So probably around after Valentine's Day, slim chance we might be seeing a rate of infection below 3%. Hopefully there are no more variants of interest as they like to see. Also, I want to mention that the mask mandate at the moment for indoor businesses is set to expire on Thursday in New York. That could change, obviously. Um, where are the hospitalization numbers? I do apologize. I'm hoping I can find it. Ah, okay. So hospitalizations have also been going down, which is another good news. Um, I just want to take a look at yesterday's number very briefly. If I can find it. Hang on here. I do apologize. Yes, yeah, 6,177. What are the numbers today? Yes, okay. So hospitalizations also going down. That's very good news. And last but not least, children vaccine. Let's see. Here we go. This is it. So Pfizer asked the FDA to authorize its COVID vaccine for children under five. So obviously I do care about this since my mother's friend's granddaughter tested positive before the year was over. 2021 I obviously have a three-year-old female cousin who is not eligible for the vaccine yet and 
Obviously, I'm closely keeping an eye on it. Because I know she will be getting vaccinated. The older sibling did get vaccinated, so that's good news. He's um, going to be seven sometime later this month, I think. But yeah, I know I didn't want to end the video talking about COVID. But again, there was some good news. I wanted to end the video on that. So I'm done talking for tonight. Just take your safety very seriously. Again, because a lot is happening. And we have one subway system to take care of. So that's it.